I'm going to show you how to find great value stocks yourself with a stock screener. In the process of using the stock screener, you're going to learn how the stock market works and how you can use it to build wealth. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a biochemist and a molecular geneticist, but that's okay. My career has taught me how to analyze data and use it to find insights. Probably many of you also know how to analyze data. That's great because the foundation for successful stock market investing is being able to analyze data. I have several principles that guide how I invest. Number one, I like to do my own research and don't blindly trust others. However, I do want to learn from others. Number two, I like free tools and free information. I'm willing to buy software or information, but only if I can see evidence that it's going to have some value. Number three, I have patience and can stomach stock market volatility because I'm thinking long term. Today, I'm going to show you about Finviz. Finviz is a pretty good free stock screener that can help you identify great companies with long term prospects. There are thousands of stocks to choose from, and a stock screener can help you narrow the list down to a small number that you can deep dive research on. If you want to find stocks that could be a good long-term investment, you need to understand the business and the, so and the risks associated with it. The stock screener will allow you to find great value stocks before other people realize it. If you want to have great investing results, you can't follow the herd unless you want to get the herd results. As Warren Buffett says, most people get interested in stocks once everyone else is. The time to get interested is when no one else is. You can't buy what's popular and do well. For me personally, I was able to learn a lot about the stock market and investing by using a stock screener because I would look up all of the different metrics that were on the stock screener to try to understand what they meant. Here are several things that are characteristic of a good business, with good long-term prospects. A good business will have strong return on assets. It'll also have a good gross profit margin and net profit margin, and it'll have low debt. If a company doesn't have much debt, it's going to be really hard for them to go bankrupt. My name's Rahul Pathakar. Let's get into using Finviz. Finviz can actually do quite a lot of stuff. Right here, I'm on the screener tab, which is, of course, what I'm going to show you today. You can see that there's actually 8,516 stocks in, uh, in the Finviz library. In order to do well in investing, you're going to have to do a deep dive analysis on your final long-term uh, stock purchases, where you try to figure out the future cash flows. That's going to take a lot of time, and there's no way that you'll be able to do that for 8,000 plus stocks. That's where the stock screener comes in, is it weeds out a lot of the bad stocks that you couldn't possibly dream of investing in and so that you can focus on the ones that are a possibility. Now, Finviz can do actually do a whole lot of other things. I'm not going to get into that too much today, um, but let's just, let's just take a, a browse through it. So, for example, it can show you how the entire stock market looks. As you can see here, you can see what's called the map view, um, the carpet map view, and each stock is depicted in how big a market capitalization it is. And you can see that, of course, Apple is the biggest stock in the US, in the S&P 500, um, followed by Microsoft. And you can find a whole lot of other um, stocks in this and see their size. And it's color coded in terms of whether they went up or down today, or you could change that to a month. You can see that in the last month, a lot of stocks have been down. Anyway, let's get back to the screener. So within the screener, we have we have three tabs. Descriptive tab, which is a lot of um, descriptions about the stocks, like what exchange they're on, what sector they're in, what industry they're in. And again, by going through and looking at all these different tabs and starting to understand it, you'll get a better understanding of how the stock market itself works. Uh, fundamentals are fundamentals of the business. These are related to earnings and how the company makes money. Um, and then there are technicals, which are related to the price movement. In order to find long-term investments, you know, fundamental analysis is one of the is is a very important part of this. 
these are some of the defaults that I might use to find um, good companies that have some prospect for the future. As I mentioned earlier, return on assets is an indicator of how much um, how much money a company makes based on how much money it puts into the company. And the neat thing here with uh, with Finviz is, of course, if I hold my mouse over any of these terms, it gives me the definition, which is handy for learning. I'm making an assumption here that that a company that was able to grow its earnings in the last five years would probably be more likely to be able to grow its earnings in the future because it knows how to do that. So I set this EPS growth in the last five years to 10%. Profit margins are really important to, um, for a good company. Good companies tend to have pretty high profit margins and that helps them to weather bad, um, bad things that happen. If they have very narrow profit margins, there they can go from a profit to a loss very easily. So here I'm setting gross margins to over 35% and net net profit margins to to over 20%. And too much debt can be a bad thing. Debt can be used to make more money um, by good management, but it also increases the risk that a company can go bankrupt. So here I'm setting the debt to equity to 0.9. Anyway, with these settings, you see that we've gone from over 8,000 possible stocks to 139. And that's probably still a little bit too much. So I'm going to come over here to the descriptive tab and pick a couple other things too. So it is very, pretty valuable to pick stocks that are going to be um, – have enough trading volume that it's going to be easy to buy and sell them. Um, and stocks that have a decently, uh, a decently large market cap are more likely to have, be able to do that. And so we could come over here to market cap and we could set that to, um, mid, maybe over 2 billion. So we want only companies that, um, that, I have a market capitalization of over 2 billion. And then you can see now we've reduced our total number of stocks down to 89 stocks. We could even be more stringent and we could say that they should be in the S&P 500, which are the 500, um, 500 or so um, biggest um, companies in the United States. Now you see that we have 41 possible stocks here. And now, we have a lot of information that we can display here. And so what we're interested in, these are companies that have that that are likely decent companies. We would have to deep dive into them to understand if that's really true or not. And we wouldn't want to just believe the screener blindly. We can click the valuation tab and now we can sort sort them in the cheapest price per earnings or forward earnings. So if I click this tab here. Now all of those 41 stocks are sorted in which ones are cheapest per um, per earnings. So price to earnings means that this first one, Micron, this first one here sells at 5.83 times its earnings. You can look at other stocks here and you can see other stocks that you might know. They're probably have heard of Pfizer, um, probably have heard of Intel. Most likely you've heard of Facebook, um, Google. Those are, those are companies that, um, they're like, they're likely to be good companies and they trade at a reasonable price to earnings. Now, if we click any of these, we can see more about them. So for example, I'll, I'll click Pfizer here. And so now you can see the, the price. The price action in daily in a daily chart um, over the last several months. We could click that. Um, we could change the time frame. Could put monthly, so we could see a longer term. You can see that actually Pfizer has been pretty good at consistently going up um, over the last decade. If we scroll down here, we can also see um, 
Other characteristics of Pfizer, you can see its market capitalization is uh, $288 billion. Um, it pays a 3.2% dividend. Um, we already looked at that price to earning ratio. So it has a, um, a price to earning ratio um, of 12.65. That's a trailing price to earnings. And again, you can just hold your mouse over it and it'll tell you stuff about it. Um, and a forward price to earnings of 8.9. How do those P values compare to the market overall? Well, here we can see that the forward PE of the S&P 500 is 17.5. For mid caps, it's 12.9, and for small caps, it's 12.5. You can see that actually mid cap and small caps are a little bit cheaper per earnings than the large cap stocks. But anyway, 17.5. And you can see that Pfizer trades considerably less than the S&P 500 average of 8.9. Now, Pfizer may not be growing very much, and so that, that can be a reason for it. However, it does pay back a dividend. You click something else on the list. Let's click the number one on the list, Micron. Micron makes memory chips. They make DRAM and, um, and flash media and 3D NAND. It's a semiconductor company. Long term, Micron has also gone up, although you can see it's more volatile. If you're willing to hold it through these, um, Ups and downs, you can see that you can make a decent amount of money over the past decade. You can see here it has, you know, really, really low price to earnings, price to earnings of 5.83 compared to the S&P 500. Um, very low debt, good current ratio, et cetera. Um, and it's projected to grow at 29.65% for the next five years. If that in fact happens, um, this could possibly be a, a decent investment. Anyway, you're going to want to give FinViz a try. I would, I definitely use other software as well. I like to use, like I said, free software. So I go look through all the data that I can. Um, if we scroll all the way down, we can find a lot of other information. We can find a lot of news stories um, about, about the stock. We can also find the, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. There is a paid version of this where you'll get more data and you'll be able to do things like backtest, um, which is, which is good. Um, you'll also be able to see, um, insider trading. Let's see the executives, um, the executives and other important people in the company and see whether they've been buying or selling um, their own their own shares. Anyway, you're going to want to try out Finviz. Thank you for joining me today. Next, you might want to check out this video here on why you might want to be investing.